Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. Today, I'm going to give you a guided tour of a CSED. CSED stands for Combination Service Entrance Device. It's a combination device because it has a meter socket and a main breaker. That makes this device service entrance equipment. In fact, this device can only be used as service entrance equipment. It may not be used as a sub panel or something of that sort because the neutral is factory bonded to the enclosure. More on that later. This is what is called an all-in-one CSED because it has the integral load center. It includes spaces for 42 circuit breakers. This panel is also solar ready. More on that later. The service entrance cable can come in from the top in which we would call it an overhead entrance or the service entrance cable can come in from the bottom in which case it would be an underground entrance. So this unit is called OH slash UG. OH meaning overhead, UG meaning underground. It gives the user both possibilities. To open up the panel, remove the meter socket cover. Remove the lower cover. Open the cabinet door. Remove the dead front. It slides right out. Then remove the line side insulating barrier. Let's say you're going to feed this CSED with underground service entrance cables. Your cables would come in right here and they would run in this gutter. You would have three cables which would commonly be 2 watt cables with the 200 amp service. One cable will be left black and one would be color coded with red electrician's tape. These two cables would go to these two hot lugs. The third cable would be color coded with white electrician's tape and it would go to this neutral lug. The current is carried by these two aluminum bars to the meter socket and then over to the cabinet side of the CSED. The aluminum bars are kept insulated from the enclosure and they pass through the wall of the enclosure through an insulated area. Notice these two elongated studs. These elongated studs are where you would add a solar ready lug kit. I've ordered this kit but it hasn't arrived yet. I'll make a video about how to install them later. Basically the cables from a PV systems inverters and safety switch which would be called a solar feed would connect right here. This is called feeding before the load. When this system is used it does not require back feeding onto the bus. The unit features a 200 amp main breaker. An aluminum strap travels from the neutral lug and goes through the wall of the enclosure without insulation. It then travels up the gutter of the main cabinet. The neutral gets distributed by aluminum straps to both sides of the cabinet. This design is called a split neutral design with fully distributed plug-on neutral bars. These are the neutral bars. Since the neutral and the grounds are bonded in this enclosure, ground wires can be connected under any available screw on the neutral bars. These are the bus bars. They distribute electrical power to the circuit breakers and then to the electrical circuits. In a solar ready panel, it is important that the bus bar be rated higher than the main breaker. In this case, the bus is rated at 225 amps while the main breaker is rated at 200 amps. If you backfeed your photovoltaic power for a solar application onto the bus bar, you will be subject to what is called the 120% rule. The 120% rule for solar panel specifies that the sum of the main breaker rating and the solar systems breaker rating must not exceed 120% of the bus bars rating. This ensures that even when the solar system is producing maximum power, there is sufficient safety margin within the panel's capacity. So in order to find 120% of the bus bar rating, we will take 225 amps and multiply it 
by 1.2. That gives us 270 amps. Then when we subtract off the 200 amps for the main breaker, we get 70 amps. So 70 amps is our maximum solar capacity with this solar ready panel when backfeeding to the bus. That will allow us to run 30 to 40 solar panels. This maximum solar capacity is generally called headroom. But what is the maximum solar capacity if the solar ready terminal kit is used as opposed to backfeeding to the bus? For that answer, I'd like to thank Square D's Level 2 Technical Support for helping me out with this one. The lugs of the solar ready kit will accept number 10 copper wire to 2 watt cable. The maximum solar capacity in this case is the same as given in 2023 NEC article 310.16. This article has a table and in this column you have the size of the wire or cable and in this column you have the temperature rating of the wire or cable and the types so this is 60 degrees celsius which is 140 degrees fahrenheit this is 75 degrees celsius which is 167 degrees fahrenheit and here's the different types and this is 90 degrees celsius which is 194 degrees fahrenheit here i've scrolled down on this table and you can see this one is the 75 degrees celsius column right here and this is the 90 degrees Celsius column. And these are the sizes of the wires. The maximum size of cable you can use for the solar ready terminal kit is 2 aught. Okay, so you go over here 2 aught and the max ampacity, the most amps you can bring into the system is 175 amps. That's your maximum solar output right there, 175 amps. And then if you have 90 degree wire, it's 195, but Homeline Square D has only tested with 75 degrees Celsius wire. So, so your maximum solar input with this particular panel is 175 amps. Contrast that to only 70 amps if you bring your PV feed directly onto the bus with the same 2 watt cable. So this gives you a much greater maximum solar capacity. Also, say you were using a 60 amp breaker for solar PVC back feeding. Well, that 60 amp breaker is only going to be able to accept usually a two AWG wire, whereas the solar ready lugs will accept a two aught cable. The smaller the cable you run from your PV application, the less your maximum solar output is going to be. So here's my actual statement from tech support. The solar ready kit includes two phase lugs, one neutral lug, one interactive inverter label and installation instructions. The lugs provided in the kit provides for a maximum of one number six to two odd AWG aluminum or one number 10 to two odd copper conductors based on the 75 degree Celsius conductor ampacity number 2 watt aluminum is rated 135 amps and 2 watt copper is rated 175 amps. Note the lugs of the kit are only UL tested and listed for 75 degree wire and if 90 degree wire is used the installer must follow the 75 degree table in the NEC. The reason I chose this particular panel is that the city is coming by to install underground electrical service. Currently, the whole neighborhood has overhead service. The city's rules are that the panels must be on an outside wall, and in my case, they want it on the garage wall. They insist on a surface mount panel, which this one is. For me, the ability for this panel to accept overhead or underground service makes the whole process much easier. I can simply get a permit to install this panel with the existing overhead service. Then, when the day comes for them to run the underground service, it will just be a matter of them disconnecting the overhead service and installing their underground service. 
I wanted the large amount of circuits on the panel to allow for later expansion. Also, I wanted the ability to easily add solar power. What do you guys think of this Homeline CSED? It cost about $360 delivered, and the solar lug kit costs about 55 bucks. It has a polished aluminum bus. I would have preferred to have a copper bus, but it's hard to find one with all these features at an economical price. Leave your comments in the comments section. It should be very interesting to hear what everyone has to say. Thanks for watching.